Good day everyone and once again we are back together. Uh, welcome to our channel and for those of you who are new to the channel please just hit that subscribe button. Do it now okay uh, just uh, so that you make sure that you always enjoy the good content that we are always dishing out okay and um, uh, also consider just hitting that notification bell so that you are alerted every time that we are posting a new lesson. All right, and for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, please just consider uh, just hitting uh, us up and our email address is info at mlungesingosi.co.za. And of course, we are still looking at uh, uh, Euclidean geometry. Uh, we're still continuing on that. And uh, today I'm going to be looking at circles. And in this case, you'll see that we've already had two lessons. I've done parallel lines. I've done triangles and I've done quads and today I want to look at circles and just to add a bit of terminology so that of course as we keep expanding remember I said to you it's one body of knowledge it's just that we segment it into different grades and uh, as a result you know many people never put the pieces of the puzzle together uh, to make a full picture so this is what I'm going to try and do in our uh, lessons all right, now let's look at, uh, first of all, just some terms that we need to familiarize ourselves with. Of course, uh, when we look at a circle, at any given point when we've got a circle, we know, of course, my circles are not going to be perfect. Okay, so we got, first of all, a center. Okay, now remember that uh, from the center to the circumference, we call that the radius of the circle okay and in this case uh, the radius um, uh, from any point uh, rather of our circumference to the center okay so the radii are equidistant so it doesn't matter from any single uh, point of our circumference to the center that's going to be a radius and it is equidistant okay now I want to just add another term, okay, uh, that we call, and I'm going to talk about a very special, uh, you know, uh, line in that case. So if I take a line and it passes through two points in our circle, okay, uh, I'm not sure this thing is misbehaving today. Okay, so uh, it passes through two points in our circle. I want you to note that line, we call it a secant, okay? So we say that's a secant. Now, this secant, what it does is that it cuts the circle into two things. Now, I'm going to uh, put the first term, okay? So this now is called a segment. So that's one segment of our circle. So usually, you know, I've cut it in such a way that you've got a bigger segment uh, on this red side so this is a segment all of this part between that secant and that uh, um, circumference of our circle all right and then so we call this you know if you want to we call this a major segment if we've got uh, two segments in this case so this is going to be a major segment okay and um, we've got obviously a minor segment there at the top. Okay, so that's a minor segment. I'm not sure what's happening with my spelling today. So that's a minor segment. Okay, now what we're going to do is uh, also, so we have what we call an arc. Now, please, I want you to note, we said once we draw this line segment in this case, uh, uh, sorry, this, uh, this, uh, secant then we've got a segment of the circle and what it does is that we've got a part that we called the segment but we also have what we call an arc now an arc in this particular case will be from now it it, it goes around uh, the circumference in this case so this would be an arc of the circle and again we can call this a minor arc okay so this would be a minor arc all right and of course 
uh, the one that I'm going to draw in that red around there, uh, this would be again a major arc. Okay, right. So those are the important terms uh, that we are supposed to know. Now, please, I want you to know there's a very special uh, line uh, that we draw. In this case, suppose that we uh, draw a line that passes through the center. Okay, now note, if I draw a line, and remember that a, a, a secant uh, always extend beyond the circumference uh, of our circle. Right, now, in this case, let me draw just another line that passes through the center. So if I take a line and I draw it from, okay, from uh, uh, circumference to circumference and it passes through the center, then what it does is that it divides the circle into two segments that are equal. So what do we call that line? Of course, you know, uh, I think most of us have used that term before. We call that a diameter. Okay, so this would be our diameter to the circle. All right, so remember that a diameter uh, is a line that segments uh, the circle into two equal parts. Okay, right, so now um, what else are we supposed to know? Remember that a diameter is equal to two times the radius. So remember we said the radius is from the center to the circumference. So we know that it is twice the radius of the circle. Okay, right. So these are the important terms that you're supposed to know. Okay, now there's another line that I want us uh, uh, to just keep in mind uh, um, of, right? I'm going to just draw it in that, uh, uh, you know, amber color, okay, or mustard, right? Now we have what we call uh, in this case, okay, I'm trying to straighten that line there, okay? So we have what we call a tangent. Now, whilst uh, the secant, okay, went through or touched the circumference twice, this time around the tangent of the circle, okay? So the tangent of the circle, okay? Remember, it's a line that only touches the circumference once. It's outside the circle, but it actually touches the, 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 the circle or the circumference uh, of the circle only once. And that is what we call uh, the tangent. So what I want us to do uh, in the next few minutes is that we're going to just look at uh, the theorems that have to do with the circle. All right. And the only reason why I went through all of these, um, you know, sort of uh, lines is so that when we refer to the, um, you know, when we go through the theorems, then you'd be able to kind of understand what they mean. Um, I think in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what we wanted uh, to, to, to show, I think that's about it. Now, uh, just the other part that I wanted you to uh, just to see there, uh, we also have what we call a chord. All right. So in this case, I almost forgot about the chord. In this case, when you've got a chord, remember, whilst the secant uh, passed through the circle, touched the circle twice, uh, in this case, for a chord, it will also touch the circumference twice, but the uh, only difference this time around is that uh, it does not go beyond the circumference. So this, in this case, uh, we will call uh, the chord. Okay, I almost forgot about that one. It's going to be quite important for some of the uh, definitions that we're going to go through. Right. So remember, we said a secant goes all the way outside the circumference, whilst a chord will actually just touch the circumference uh, in this case and not beyond. And of course, we've got a segment in this case, which are the two halves of our, uh, well, not halves, but uh, parts of our circle that are going to be uh, uh, in this case um, uh, divided by that secant or in sometimes even by that chord. All right. So I hope that uh, kind of helps as we are going to go through uh, the first, uh, uh, you know, four theorems. Okay. And then, of course, uh, we'll continue as such. All right. All right. So starting with theorem one. All right. So uh, theorem one is quite simple. 
Uh, by the way, theorem one to theorem three uh, talks about the center of a circle. So all that it simply says, it says uh, that a line that is drawn from the center of a circle, okay, uh, that bisects a chord is perpendicular to that particular chord. So if you draw a line from the center, let's call that O and let's call that uh, AB, okay, that is C. So if we draw a line from the center and that line bisects a chord, right? So cuts the chord into two equal parts. Therefore, we can conclude that, therefore, it means that it would be <coughs> perpendicular. Now, uh, a way to prove that is quite simple. Uh, all you do is just uh, make construction lines, okay, in that case. And you prove the triangles OAC, uh, uh, you know, to be uh, congruent to be uh, to triangle OCB. All right. So all uh, I mean, you remember these are radii, and you've got two sides, uh, uh, AC uh, and CB that are equal, and OC is common. So you've got side, 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 and as a result, it means that those uh, uh, two triangles are congruent, and as a result, it means that those that angle C1 and C2 would actually be 90 degrees. Now, obviously, uh, theorem one has got also a converse to it. Uh, and it simply says, if a line that is drawn from the center is perpendicular to the chord, therefore, it means that it bisects the chord. So it's kind of, you know, same, uh, you know, one way or, or, you know, a different way of saying the same thing. Uh, in this case, we are talking about it being perpendicular and therefore, uh, concluding that it means that it bisects that particular chord. And so that's theorem one. Let's look at uh, theorem two quickly. Right, hopefully we can just rush through those theorems. Now, theorem two has to do, again, as we said, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's about the center. So in this case, when we have a circle, right, and here we are, we've got a center, Right, it simply says that if we've got an angle at the center, it will always be equal to twice the angle at circumference. Now, of course, I'm not going to say it as it is word for word, uh, but that simply means if this angle here at the circumference, now you please need to be careful that that angle is at the circumference. So if this angle here is X, that is at the circumference, then it means that uh, if it's subtended in this case by the same chord. Uh, now the angle from the center will be twice uh, that value there if they are subtended by the same chord in this case. So that should be 2x over there, right? So angle at center is equal to two times the angle at circumference. So please just remember that uh, quite easy. Uh, I'm not going to go through the proofs uh, thereof, uh, but, you know, of course, maybe later on we can do the proofs separately. Uh, but in this case, that's theorem two. And then uh, theorem three, uh, again, has to do with the center. Okay. Uh, so if we look at theorem three this time around. Okay. So uh, when we draw a circle, okay, and... There we are. We've got now a um, a diameter there. Of course, that has to do with a, a, a diameter. So all it simply says, it says if the angle um, is subtended by a diameter, okay, if the angle, in a way, it kind of, um, you know, uh, complements what you've just said. So we said if the angle at the circumference is subtended by a diameter, then it means that that angle will actually be 90 degrees, okay? So in that case, that will be perpendicular, okay? Those two uh, uh, chords will be perpendicular. But I mean, if you think about it, so if we said angle at center is, you know, that's a straight line, so that's 180. So obviously the angle at circumference uh, in that case will be actually half of that. So angle at center, is equal to twice the angle at circumference. Angle at circumference is 90, so the angle at center will be 180. So remember, uh, that's in, in so far as theorem 3 is concerned. Now, 
I want us to look at a different set of theorems. Uh, these ones have to do uh, with now, uh, you know, proving in a sense that you have a, uh, you know, a cyclic quad. So what we're going to do is look at those uh, uh, now. Uh, obviously, I want you to learn these theorems. You don't necessarily need to commit them to memory, but what you need to know is how to apply them. Okay, right. Let's have a look at those. All right, so uh, theorem five, now theorem five and six, in fact, four, five and six have to do with, you know, the proof uh, that something would be a cyclic quad. Now, theorem five simply says that the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. Okay, so just keep in mind. So if we have A, B, C and D, being a cyclic quad, and remember, we did mention this in the previous video, that uh, if you've got a cyclic quad, the properties of a cyclic quad are that, uh, unlike any other quad, uh, quadrilateral, okay, in this case, uh, the opposite angles, first of all, are supplementary. So if I take angle B for argument's sake, so it means if I take angle B plus angle D, those would be equal to 180, Okay. And so what that also means is that if I take angle A uh, plus angle C, uh, that would also be equal to 180. So that means they are supplementary. They add up to 180. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's one of the ways of proving, by the way, that you've got a cyclic quad. Uh, <clears throat> remember, the other way of proving that you've got a cyclic quad is uh, actually using uh, theorem 4, which we've, we've just gone through. Okay, so um, uh, we'll go through that uh, when time allows. Okay, but now let's go to theorem six. Okay, also having to do with cyclic quads. Now, the uh, theorem six simply says that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle. Now, if I've got a cyclic quad, Again, let's say this is A, B, C, and D, and let's say that's E. Now, if I've got a cyclic quad, in this case, the exterior, now note, this angle over here is on the outside of the cyclic quad. So we say the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle. So you go to the one next to it, and then you go to the opposite one. And I mean, it would make sense. Think about it. If you think about, uh, you know, um, the angle, let's say D1 and D2. If you think about D1 and D2, they form 180 degrees. Of course, those are angles on a straight line. We did mention that in our previous video. Okay, so what that then does is that because also D1 and B are also supplementary, therefore it makes uh, B and D2 uh, equal. So in this case, we know that B, angle B, would be equal to D2. And in this case, we know that uh, the opposite angles of a cyclic quad, uh, or, or rather the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. All that you need to say when you are giving the proof is that you're saying exterior angles, not the proof, rather when you are proving, uh, uh, or when, um, you know, uh, yeah, when you are proving actually, uh, you just mentioned that, um, you remember that you must all, always give a reason why certain angles are equal. And in this case, it would be the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Okay, so you don't need to write out everything in full because, of course, by virtue of you writing this, we know that it's equal to the opposite interior angle. Okay, right. Now, we are going to go to another special group uh, of theorems. Okay that now have to do with the tangent. Let's go to that one. All right, so looking at theorem seven, okay, so remember we said these ones have to do with tangents. Okay, and theorem seven is quite simple. Uh, remember we said a tangent is a line that touches the circle once, and it simply says that a line drawn from the center of the circle uh, to uh, the tangent, okay, uh, will essentially be perpendicular at the point of tangency. We, this we call the 10 radius theory, uh, theorem rather. Uh, in this case, that means that if we've got a tangent, 
and a line that's drawn from the center and means the radius in this case, uh, they will actually be 90 degrees from perpendicular and uh, they will be perpendicular at the point where they meet at the point of tangency. Okay. And then um, just the next one uh, also having to do with radii. Okay. And uh, rather uh, tangents. So uh, theorem eight simply uh, just simply says, all right, so if I draw two tangents from the same point outside the circle, okay, so if that is our point outside the circle, and I've got two tangents in this case, so what this theorem simply says is that uh, both these, th uh, 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 both these uh, tangents uh, would therefore be equal in length, okay? Uh, and, you know, the way to prove that you can just simply make it simple for yourself, just uh, make those construction lines there. Okay, you've got radii. And by the way, you can just make that uh, line over there. So what you then have are two triangles that would basically be congruent. Okay, this triangle here and that red one there. Why? Because uh, in this case, you've got this side equal to that side. Of course, they are radii. Uh, in this case, you've got this side, which is uh, common. All right. And um, uh, of course, uh, you can even use uh, the fact that these are 90 degrees uh, from the previous theory uh, theorem. And you've got this one as 90 degrees as well from the previous uh, theorem. And of course, you've got uh, uh, you know, as angle, as, I mean, side, angle, side. Okay, so we've got 90 degrees and two sides that are equal. And so therefore that would mean these ones are therefore equal. These sides are equal. So if I'm calling this A, B and C, then it means that A, B is equals to C, B. All right, so that is another theorem that has to do with the, you know, the, um, the tangent. And then the last one, which is uh, sort of the favorite of the grade 11 uh, theorems. And I want you to please learn these theorems uh, in a way, um, you know, not off by heart, you know, word for word, but know how to apply them. Okay. Um, essentially, you know, saying this one is uh, uh, quite long. Uh, this we call the 10 chord theorem. And it's as simple as this. If we've got a tangent, okay, to a circle, right? The angle between the tangent and the chord will always be equal to the opposite angle from that chord, okay, away from that chord. So look at this. And by the way, please just, always try to uh, look out for that 10 chord theorem. I, I don't know why, but they seem to love this theorem so much. Uh, so in this case, there we are. It means that if I've got uh, A, B, and C there, uh, let's call that D. So it means that angle B, C, D, okay? So angle B, C, D, okay, would be equal to angle B, A, C right is equal to B A C and the reason is that it is 10 chord okay so that's a 10 chord theorem and of course um, that also means that A C okay let's give this a name uh, let's say that's E so that means A C E would now be equal to uh, A B C Okay, so A, C, E would also be equal to um, A, B, C. And again, that would be 10 chord theorem. So please always look out for that 10 chord theorem as well. Um, in this case, uh, uh, you know, obviously that it, it always finds its lens itself, you know, um, on, on that party on, on actually when we are doing questions. So just always look out for it. All right, ladies and gents. So what I want to do is just to take a few examples, you know, from the grade 11. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm just going to stick to the grade 11, uh, uh, you know, theorems. And that is the reason why 
I don't want you to think grade 11, grade 12. Remember, we said that geometry or Euclidean geometry is a full body of, of knowledge. All right. So we just need to make sure that we treat it with respect. But the first thing that I want us to do is to know how to answer questions that are based on this. And then we are going to therefore add, you know, the grade 12, uh, you know, when we look at ratio uh, uh, proportionality and so on and so forth. All right. Now, let's apply this and see how to answer questions. All right, looking at our first example. Um, so when you're dealing with Euclidean geometry, uh, try to always, first of all, you're going to read from the diagram that you're given. All right, try and of course, um, what I, I just end up making a mess of my drawing, but a necessary mess. So what I try to do is, I always um, just try to fill in as much information as I possibly can on the drawing so that I can be able to follow what I'm doing. And if you can use different colors, okay? So they've told us that O is the center, okay? So by virtue of O being the center, what does that tell us? It tells us, well, in this case that I've got OA equals to AB, right? I don't know whether I'm going to need that or not, but it would help for me to remember that. It might help, it might not help. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So they tell us AOB is 70 degrees. So we know this angle over here, okay, 70 degrees. And then in, uh, in this case, we know that AO is parallel to BC. Uh, they've indicated that to us. Uh, perhaps what I would do is just do that, uh, you know, just make that in a different color so that I'm able to remember that. Okay, so they want us to find X and Y. So let's try to do that together, okay? So um, before I get to X and Y, let's see what we would know. So can you see that if I go to, because I've got two parallel lines, then I have alternating angles. C1 and um, AOC, uh, you know, that angle A there, which is equal to X, okay? So that means that C1 would actually also be equal to X. So C1 is X, all right? And then what else do I know? Well, look at this. I also can see that angle at center is equal to twice angle at circumference. Uh, if I look at AOB, it is an angle at the center, okay? And in this case, remember, they are subtended by this arc over here, okay? This arc over there. Or you can just draw an imaginary chord, uh, a chord there, okay? So in this case, what do we have? They have the same arc. And so as a result, I know this is the angle at center, which is uh, uh, 70 degrees, okay? So we say angle at center is equal to twice angle at circumference. Notice in this case, here's my angle at center and there's my angle at circumference. So it means that C1 is actually the angle at circumference. And I know in that case that the angle at the center is equal to twice that. So it means that C1 should be 35 degrees. So that already tells me that the value of X is 35. I hope I'm not uh, making a mess of it there uh, such that you can't follow. Okay. So, um, um, so we know that X would be 35 degrees. We said the first thing. I noticed that it made a Z there because of the parallel lines, AO and BC. And so AO, AOC was equal to C1 because uh, um, there are parallel lines there. So in answering that, that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, and then let's go to angle Y. Uh, we can also use parallel lines over there. And you'll see, I'm just going to do that in uh, a different color. Let me pick yellow, the ultra yellow. Okay, so in this case, I see, I, I, I see a Z over there. So that tells me that Y is equal to that AOB over there. Okay, right. So let's answer our questions. 
Right, so remember every time that you're not just going to give us an answer, but you must give us a reason as well why you are saying those angles are equal. So I'm going to start with saying, all right, I know I have AO uh, being parallel uh, to BC, and that is given, okay? And so that makes angle uh, AO, uh, in fact, we started with uh, OAC, okay? So OAC is equal to... Um, C1, okay, so AOC, which is that angle there, which is X, is equal to C1. Remember, we said because of that uh, Z formation there, uh, we made it in green, that Z formation in green, so which is equal to X in this case, okay, and why is that? Uh, we say these are alternating angles, okay. Right, we've already expressed that those lines are parallel. So those are alternating angles. So in that case, all right, so then we know that those are equal. However, then I know in this case that um, uh, o -A, uh, a o b so AOB is equal to, now note OAB is equal to twice a, C, B, A, C, B, or you can just simply say C1, isn't it? Yeah, let's just make it simpler for ourselves. And that's going to be which theorem? Angle at center, right? So A, O, B, which is that uh, angle over there, okay? Um, oh, I'm erasing there, uh, which is that angle over there, all right? Which is 70 degrees. We know that angle is equal to twice um c1 okay and why is that we said well this is going to be angle at center okay equals to two times angle at circle or you can say circumference okay right so therefore what does that tell us therefore if aob is 70 degrees and it's twice C1, so it means that C1 would actually be uh, 35 degrees. So that's where we get that 35 degrees from. So C1, which is equal to X, we've now established it's equal to X, is equal to 35 degrees. Okay, right, I hope uh, that made sense to you. And then all we simply do with Y, with Y we just simply said, look, We've got those parallel lines over there. And in this case, again, it forms that alternating angles, that Z transformation there in that case. So therefore we say, well, for Y, it's as simple as just simply saying AOB, okay, is equal to um, OBC, OBC. So that's angle B there. Okay, so that's AOB is equals to OBC, all right? I think that's what we said, uh, OBC, yes. And both of those are equal to Y, but why are they equal? Because they are alternating angles, okay? If we need to give a reminder, again, we did say that AO is, given, is parallel to BC, uh, but we've already uh, got that down. And then now, so it means that uh, Y is now equal to 70 degrees. So in this case, this would be uh, 70 degrees. All right. So uh, when you're doing, um, you know, um, Euclidean geometry, try and fill in as much as, of the information as possible uh, so that you can follow on. Of course, we're going to be having a buildup of this. Uh, and uh, obviously, over time, we're going to do as many questions as we possibly can especially including the other theorems as well. Okay, let's go to the second, uh, um, you know, uh, example. All right, looking at the second question. All right, once again, we are given uh, another rider there. So PS is a diameter. So they are telling us that that's a diameter. So again, if you want to uh, just make sure that you remember 
that those are radii so that means that these two lines are equal uh, that is uh, op and os those are equal uh, because they are radii so in this case uh, they tell us that opt uh, so that's opt that's over there is 120 okay there they've shown us that that angle is 120 and then we are instructed to find uh, x y and z so what we're going to do before we even get to answering the question let's work within the diagram okay once you work within the diagram it will be easier to answer the questions afterwards so if i look at uh, that opt that angle there i see that uh, first of all it's an exterior angle but if you note i'm going to show you there in the red okay that guy is a cyclic quad can you see it touches all the four sides of a of the circle so that's a cyclic quad over there so i look at this and i say well uh, there's a theorem that says the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle so already can you see that i found the angle x okay so angle x should therefore be equal to uh, that 120 okay and then uh, if i look at it again uh, remember we said okay uh, yeah our um our theorem that has to do with in this case yeah there we have a diameter it's subtended by a diameter it's at the circumference and as a result it means that angle there should be 90 degrees okay we say these are angles at semicircle, right? So angle at semicircle, uh, in this case, uh, is 90 degrees. So in this case, I know that Y is 90, okay? And when I look at Y, I mean uh, at Z, what I would do there is I can use the triangle. I can use this triangle over here and say, look, if I look at triangle uh, P, qs all right i see that the exterior angle of a triangle remember the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle so meaning angle y plus angle z should therefore be equal to 120 because uh, that's the exterior angle and it's equal to the opposite the sum of the opposite interior angles okay so as a result, I would be able to get that angle over there. Okay, right. Um, that's the way that I'll do it. Obviously, our methods just look a little messy, but that's you working within the diagram uh, to try and find out whatever it is that you need in order to answer the question. All right, so let's find angle X first. So we said uh, angle um, OPT. So that's OPT. Um, is equal to uh, angle R, okay? Uh, let's just call it angle R there, okay? Which is equal to uh, uh, 120, okay? In this case, and what is the reason? Remember, every time that you state something, we're supposed to give a reason for that, okay? So what is the reason? We said this is the exterior angle of a cyclic quad, of a cyclic quad okay uh, please look out for that and then um, so therefore it means that x is equal to 120 right and then um, then we looked for y but remember we said now angle y should be equal to 90 degrees okay why or you can even say uh, O, uh, SQP equal to 90 degrees and in this case because it is subtended by a diameter uh, which is PS okay so it means that it's an angle at semicircle so this are angle at semicircle all right and ladies and gents please don't try to make this any longer than it should be uh, because the examiner understands once you say angle at semicircle of course we do understand that that is equal to 90 degrees all right and then um so we've got the angle y there 
and then the final one which is z uh, and by the way if there is a, another way that you could have gotten that nothing wrong with that you can still do that quite uh, easily okay so um for angle z remember i said now i'm going into triangles and ladies and gents that's why i went through the trouble of taking you through triangles first of all uh, you know parallel lines because remember we said it's one body of knowledge okay right so in this case the exterior angle right so i'm looking at triangle um uh, i had written that in blue there triangle pqs so we said the exterior angle of that triangle which is 120 is equal to the sum remember in this case uh, this line here continues from your triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle so i've got this one as 90 so now it means that angle uh, z plus y okay is equal to 120 or opt so i'm going to say opt okay is equals to z angle z plus angle y uh, of course as the americans say z right so it's z angle z plus angle y and in this case uh, y is that we're going to say the exterior angles of a triangle okay right exterior angle of a triangle you don't need to say any anything more than that okay and in this case we know this guy is 120 we already know y is uh, 90 degrees so we can actually find angle z and in this case we find that z is 120 minus 90 uh, which of course will give us 30 degrees and that is how we will get all the angles within our diagram all right i hope that is helpful okay i hope that helps you uh, you know to try and get yourself into the rhythm of answering those uh, geometric uh, riders okay right let's take another example i think it will be the last one and then of course we will um, uh, close this session all right so looking at the very last one uh, for today and of course we're going to do some more complicated examples uh, you know in our next series okay so what we're going to do is we're saying okay tpb is a tangent so there we are given a tangent over there okay i'm just going to use that just to show that that's a tangent over there and they tell us that st is parallel to qp so there is st parallel to qp okay over there all right so it's indicated to us uh, again right now they tell us that t is 64 so it's that angle over there and of course uh, q is 80 degrees so which is that angle over there all right now uh, we need to find x y and z all right uh, giving reasons now i want you to please note once again let's try and work within the diagram first okay before we uh, you know do anything else so if i look at this first of all um uh, let's start with the fact that uh, we know that we've got um, a tangent over there okay and in this case uh, we know that if we've got a tangent we can always use the 10 chord theorem okay uh, just keep that in mind now remember ladies and gents the moment you have a um, parallel or you've got a pair of parallel lines remember that you can always exploit the relationship between parallel lines you remember we've got that uh, you know fun okay so remember we can have fun in this case we know that uh, uh, those are corresponding angles uh, that's f there those are co-interior angles and that's uh, in this case alternate angles when you've got uh, yeah in the let me just make them in those in that green color so in this case when i look at this first of all i note that my angles are parallel or, or rather my my the lines are parallel so if you note there if i take stp 
which is that angle that was given to me over there, it should be equal to that angle over there, which is P1. All right. And why is that? Because remember, those lines are parallel. So actually, I'd be using co-interior angles. Okay. So I know that's equal to 64. Okay. That's because of co-interior angles. But again, I mean, look at this. Then it means if I'm going to use the 10 chord theorem, okay, uh, I told you that's a favorite. So there's my tangent, there's my chord, right? Remember, it's equal to the angle on the opposite side uh, of the chord. So in this case, it means that angle over there uh, should also be equal to 64. And so that makes X 64. In fact, I should write it. Uh, using the same color, okay, so that we can see that uh, there's something common there, right? So that would be 64, okay? So that's 64, that's 64, and that is 64 as well, okay? Now, what else would I be able to get from that, okay? Uh, would I be able to get the angle Y, okay? Now, if you think about it again, Y, uh, those are co-interior angles. Let me just do it in red. So those are co-interior angles. Remember that I've got parallel lines there. So it means that this angle here plus that pair there, those are co-interior angles. And so those are equal to uh, 180. So we would be able to get angle Y from that. And then finally, uh, angle Z. If I look at it now, I've got angle Y, so I can use the triangle. Um, in this case, let me just uh, do it in that nice and yellowy color. So that nice bright yellow color. So if I go to triangle STP, then I would be able to obtain Y because remember, I've got this here. Uh, I already have a Z, um, rather Y. And so I'd be able to obtain Z. I think I said obtain Y, but it's Z that we would want. Okay, right. So can we answer the question quickly? So I want the diagram to be in front of me. So uh, I'm not going to close it in this case. So I'm going to start with X. Remember, we said, well, if I look at P1, P1 is equal to angle STP. Right, so that STP, STP, okay, and what is that? Those we said those are corresponding angles, corresponding angles. Why? Because the uh, ST is parallel to QP, and that was given. Uh, if you wanted to, you could have stated that first and uh, mentioned that it's given, okay, but in this case, uh, so it means that P1 is equal to 64 degrees. Now, once I've got uh, P1, remember now P1 is equal to, um, uh, uh, this is PSR, uh, PSQ rather, P1 is equal to PSQ, which is equal to X, okay? And why is that? Because of the 10, chord theorem okay uh let me try to remove this guy uh over there okay so that's because of the 10 chord theorem uh in this case so it means that angle x therefore should be equal to 64 degrees i hope that makes sense ladies and gents so we started here then we came here then we went to this one using the 10 chord theorem and then um, let's go for the next one. So we said then we are looking for Y, but we remember that angle Y, so X plus Y plus that uh, um, angle Q there, those should be 180 Y because they are co-interior. So it means X plus Y plus uh, what's that angle uh, SQP, or PQS plus PQS, all right, those should be 180 degrees, 
And in this case, we said th those are co-interior angles. Remember that ST is parallel to QP. Right. So in this case, I've got X, which is 64, plus Y, which is unknown, plus that angle over there, PQS, which was 80 degrees. Okay. It's that angle over there, 80 degrees. Right, uh, we were given that angle or angle Q. Uh, in this case, then we know that this is equal to 180. So that would now give us uh, the value of Y. Of course, that would be minus 80. That would make this 100. Uh, minus 64. Okay, uh, so that would be 100 minus 64. That should be uh, 36. Okay, right, so that's 36 degrees. So in this case, we know that our value for Y is 36 degrees. Okay, that's that value there, that's 36 degrees. And then finally, to get Z, we said we are going to use uh, our, okay, there's our yellow there, our yellow triangle, okay? We now have this angle over here, we have that angle over there, so we can find this angle there, right? And just another thing, please do not assume anything when it comes to, um, you know, Euclidean geometry. If you're not told something, for instance, you know, some might say, ah, oh, that looks like a 90 degree. Remember, if you're not told it's a 90 degree tri I mean angle or triangle for that matter, please don't assume that it is, okay? The fact that it might look like it does not mean it is. Okay, right. So all we simply do is that we take angle Z plus Y plus T. Okay, so Z, I'm going to take that plus Y plus T. Okay, is equal to 180. And these are the sum of angles, angles on a triangle. Okay. So that's sum of angles on a triangle, but we already know we want Z in this case. We know Y is 36. We know angle T. It was given to us as 64. There it is there. Okay. Uh, so that's 64. And in this case, that would equal to 180. And so it means that angle Z should also be equal to a hundred. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to show you there is another way that we could have gotten uh, angle Z without going through all this uh, nitty gritties. So in this case, I want you to please note, uh, did I say 100? No, man, it, it should actually be equal to uh, 80. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, remember, that's, uh, that gives me 100 and minus that, that should give me 80. Sorry about that. So in this case, this Z should be equal to 80. But you could have also just simply said, look, this again, 10 chord theorem. Look at this. If I follow the blue line, if I take this angle here, there's my chord. Where's the angle on the opposite side? There it is there. Okay, so again, 10 chord theorem. That should have given you the fact that that's 80. And that's what I love about, uh, you know, this section, because it doesn't matter which way you go. As long as you do the right thing, you always end up at the right answer. OK, um, so, yeah, I'd love to leave it there, ladies and gents. Of course, we're going to pick up some more, you know, just to check uh, on, on how you're doing. And this is my advice to you. Whenever you're looking at uh, analytical, I mean, uh, uh, Euclidean geometry, rather, uh, always make it a point that at least once a day, look at one rider so that you get, you familiarize yourself with, you know, how to answer questions there. And that builds confidence as well. Okay, I'll, I'll show you how it's exactly going to be the same process when it comes to all the other, um, you know, theorems that we are going to add on. All right. Um, but I want to leave it right here. And um, for those of you who haven't subscribed, please make sure to click that button, okay? Just hit that subscribe button. And of course, uh, for those of you who uh, need assistance, you can always get in touch with us. Email address is info at mlungisimkosi.co.za. 
Um, otherwise, from me for now, I will see you guys next time. Shop, shop.